Hello everyone and welcome back to the Green Developer channel. I'm really excited today as I've spent a fair bit of time over the past week preparing for this video and I'm super happy I'm finally sharing my experience with all of you because I believe this will be truly helpful to a lot of you out there. Today I'm reviewing Sean Island's SwiftUI Fundamentals course, so let's get right to it. All right, so first of all, if you don't know who Sean Allen is by now, he's a fantastic content creator here on YouTube who has incredible resources to help people learn Swift and iOS development and just generally keep up with what's happening in our little corner of the programming world. I'm sure that most of you know him, but if you don't, make sure to go check him out. I'll leave a link in the channel description. If you haven't heard about them, over the past few months, Sean has started releasing more comprehensive courses on Teachable, something with a little bit more structure than regular YouTube videos that allows him to dive deeper into some topics and give a more comprehensive explanation of whatever he's trying to teach, while obviously allowing him to also spend more resources on them. So over the past two weeks, I've gone through his SwiftUI Fundamentals course so I could give a real hands-on experience review of what it's like taking the course, who it's aimed for, and if you should consider it for yourself. And spoiler alert, I wasn't disappointed at all. And before I get into the details of it all, if you would like to go check out the course for yourself, I'll leave a link down below so you can go check it out. If I'm lucky, I might even get a little discounted offer for you guys, so hopefully I can make that happen. Okay, so let's get started. What do you get with this course? The SwiftUI Fundamentals course is a fairly concise set of videos, a couple hours of content that's easily digestible and that takes you through building four different iOS apps, starting off slowly with simple and fairly straight to the point examples to get your feet wet with SwiftUI. It then ramps up towards the end to a more complete app with a couple different screens, a couple different moving pieces, like you would kind of expect in a regular situation building an iOS app. On top of those, it's also included an extra section, which is supposed to be updated as time goes on, where Sean takes in comments from people who have taken the course and takes in his new experiences with SwiftUI or whatever has been released uh, to work through optimizing and making some changes to the first four apps that you've built within the course. Also opening discussions to what could have been done differently within those apps. You also get access to a Slack channel where you can ask questions not only to Sean but also to other developers that are taking the course if you ever have question or would like some external input about something that you've learned within the course or if you just want to ask anything about Swift related programming. So what do you actually learn and who is it aimed at? Well, well, like the name of the course implies, this is a Swift UI fundamentals course, but obviously that means just about anything at this point in time. So let me try to make this a little bit more clear. From the get-go, Sean makes it very clear that the course is aimed to teach the fundamentals of how to build complete Swift UI apps, but by focusing on everything that's related to how the data is managed within the app. When you look around at things like the Swift UI subreddit or the Swift UI related posts that you see on Instagram, on Twitter sometimes, there's definitely a fair share of the content that's being created out there that's focused heavily on the cool animations and the nice UI features you can use to build some incredible looking stuff with Swift UI. This is not at all what this course is about, and I couldn't agree more with that. Like Sean says in the course, although very nice and cool, I feel like that part of Swift UI, the building a UI part, making things feel pretty, is the easy part, or at least the part that you can clearly learn on the fly as you add new things and you know spice up your views and your UIs within the apps you're working on. The actual hard part of Swift UI, especially coming from UIKit, is how do you actually build an app that's not only pretty, but actually does what you want it to do from a functional standpoint and does it while staying maintainable, readable, and robust? That's exactly what the focus is on for the whole course. So by the end, I didn't feel like I knew all the tricks and neat things you could do to do cool animations and everything that goes on with that, but I definitely felt like I had a good grasp on what it actually takes to build a Swift UI app and not only create cool, you know, Swift UI views with mock data. And you might have caught a little something I just said about how that paradigm shift coming from UIKit is the hardest part about learning Swift UI. And that's a good segue into talking about who is this course aimed for? This course doesn't teach the very basics of Swift programming and definitely assumes at least a solid base of knowledge of Swift. It also draws a lot of parallels with UIKit, which 
Although not completely necessary to keep up with the course, make it a lot easier to understand if you also have that UI kit base before going into the course. If you are a complete beginner coming to iOS development, I believe you should start with something a little bit more general beforehand. Sean Allen has a more beginner course on Teachable as well, but I can't vouch for that one since I haven't taken it. But look into something that will teach you, you know, the Swift basics and you know how the language actually works and get some experience under your belt before you actually jump to that you know swift ui fundamentals course but if you're someone like me who has experience building ui kit apps even if it's not much and you're still a bit of a beginner at it i think you'll find in this course an amazing introduction to the world of swift ui which will hopefully prepare you really well to explore it later on with your own projects all right now that those more obvious questions are answered let me talk to you about some general observations and why I believe this is actually a really fantastic course. First of all, the pace of learning is fantastic. Sean writes the code with you and explain it as he goes, which makes it a perfect pace to be able to keep up with what's going on and get a solid first pass understanding of what you're doing. But the best part is that after basically every single thing you will build, Sean will go back through the process in more details after he's written it to really drive the point home and make sure everything that was explained was done so thoroughly and nothing was left out. On top of that, repetition of explanations when building something new, there's a very clear and deliberate attempt at making the more common patterns and more core concepts come back around multiple times. It really hammers down those concepts into your head and makes sure that they actually stick. What ends up happening is you will hear about a concept once, You'll hear about a concept a second time and a bell will ring in your head about the fact that you've seen this before and by the third or fourth time you start seeing the patterns emerge before Sean even writes it down because he did such a great job showing them and showing when they actually come into use. Another thing I enjoyed is that there's a very organic way of going about learning a new framework or a toolkit that transpires in the course that makes it very easy to follow along. At least in my case, and I don't know about you, but when I learn a new library or a new toolkit, whatever it might be, I don't overly focus on refactoring and structuring things from the get-go so that they're all neatly separated and follow a clear architecture or whatever. When I first started learning UIKit, I had huge view controllers that did way too much and were obviously not the best way to go about things, but they allowed me to focus on important details of what I was working on and what was going on and leave all that refactoring for later once I had a better understanding of what I just did. That kind of pattern is followed all throughout the course. First you build something in the most straightforward way possible, most things in a single file so that you can focus specifically on what you're doing and not get lost into the details that are less important at the time. And once you've gone through it, you refactor it into something that actually makes sense for an app that you would try to maintain. You're never trying to do too much at the same time and it truly helps make things go smoothly as you're learning the new concepts. And that's not to say that keeping a clean architecture and clear project structure is thrown out the window through the course, it's just tackled in its own step so that it doesn't overshadow everything else you're trying to learn. And lastly, I'm a big believer in the fact that learning comes from doing, and throughout the course, Sean gives small challenges that are all very manageable because they're all things you've seen earlier in the course, and they let you make your first steps alone with SwiftUI without anything directly holding your hand. It's always pretty straightforward when Sean is about to start coding something that you have all the tools to do yourself. He'll invite you to pause the video so that you can do it before him, and then compare it to whatever he ends up making after. Is it enough to make it so all the concepts are going to be ingrained in your head by the time the course is over? And is it going to be enough so that you're ready to you know, go without having to refer to any videos or tutorials ever again? Of course not. But it does seem to hit the mark to get you started so that it doesn't feel so bad to jump into your own projects after you're done with the course. And by all means, please, I'm going to reiterate what Sean says at the end of the course. Listening to videos and tutorials is one thing. It's great to get you started and it's amazing references when you need to go back to something you've learned before. But use this as a stepping stone to build your own projects and start problem solving issues that are yours specifically. And that's when you will actually start learning the most. All right, I feel like I've rambled on long enough. I do my best to keep these videos somewhat concise. But anyway, 
I wanted to make sure to give you a thorough review and a couple pointers on the course so that you can decide if it would be useful to you. It's honestly a fantastic course and even though Sean has had a lot of experience teaching through videos on his YouTube channel, it's great to see that he's hit the mark quickly when it comes to you know, bigger teaching projects like this one. If you're interested in checking it out, again, there's a link in the description down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to hit subscribe. And if you would like to support this channel even more, you can check out my Patreon down below. I'll see you all next week. And until then, take care.